Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the show again. We're up and running. Sometimes we get DDoSed and our show gets knocked off. And that happens on occasion, so we do another section. This is going to be a short 30-minute segment, kind of hitting on the top topics of the day. We've got people reeling from their uh, encounter with Donald Trump when he said he was the chosen one. That sent a lot of Republicans south, not wanting to vote for Trump anymore, looking for another party. So welcome to our show. I support your rights to bear arms. I will not push gun control upon you. And I also believe that we could appeal to the Democrats as well with solutions for the homeless and the environment that are not going to cost taxpayers a lot of money. Rediverting funds into areas that really matter. That's what I'm, I'm going to do and that will be my forte. Trump tells Republicans he may be cutting security, Social Security and Medicare if he wins in 2020. How to dis disarm and disable your entire plan for 2020. Tell everybody in advance you're going to cut all their benefits. This is the, the act of a buffoon. No one in the world would say such things, saying he's going to cut Social Security and Medicare if he really wanted to win in 2020. I mean, what's wrong with this guy? Well, apparently a lot. Polls are saying that he is dropping significantly in the polls. Yeah. Strange that that story, oh, there it is. Six polls and more than 6,000 interviews show Trump's approval rating drop, which is very weird. He's uh, made a lot of mistakes like his sanctions against Iran and uh, China has resulted in a problem with him, trade deal, because of his sanctions against Iran and charging Meng with a crime, which is absurd. And Trump won't recant that. And he stuck with a bad trade relationship with China, which is now affecting the stock market, and on Friday it dropped 627 points. Yeah. The Dow Jones had another bad day at 623 points on Friday. Yeah, major drop. And everyone's wondering, you know, you're hearing at this dinner table tonight, uh, what do we should we do with the 401ks? You know, they're high risk. I mean, everyone's wondering if they're going to move their 401ks now that the confidence is beginning to turn in the markets. That's what happens when you have a bad president. We've got a few people over at our guest cam. We've got the pro cams up. New York Viking is in. Uh, Stealth Mode is here with his face. How you doing, man? And then Zellfire is in. He's got his camera and he's uh, hanging out doing what we do best. Appreciate you coming in. Stealth mode, what's your deal? Do you have a microphone on or not really? Okay. Well, sometimes you guys can activate your microphones and we'll, we'll get back to you on that, but keep broadcasting and we'll, we'll come in and bring a mic in sometime and get you on up and running. Yeah. Nope. No mic. No big deal. Hey, a lot of you can go on camera and just be seen. It's kind of fun to be seen in a show that gets so many views globally. That's that's fine. But in the future, you know, we can actually take uh, comments and uh, any type of interaction from people who have uh, an interest in talking about politics. We take on tough issues here, like Obama's scar on his head. We talked about that. Why did he have brain surgery and how come no one actually told anyone he had a brain surgery where he they pulled the back of his head off? We never got to that. Trump never bothered to look into Bar Barack Obama or Hillary Clinton or Elizabeth Warren. That was my idea to check on a DNA and no charges against her. So Trump basically isn't doing anything, really. He just says a lot. He talks a lot. Oh, we're going to do this. We're going to do that. He doesn't do anything. I wanted to know what was that implant was in the back of his head, you know. Oh, you're in training. Right on. You're, you're in sign language training. That's good. Well, good for you, man. Got a lot of things happening in our show. <sighs> it's a sustainability show, and I wanted to mention that staying out of war is the best thing our country can do. But probably not the best thing the New World Order wants for us. They want us to have a buildup of military weapons. That's why Trump isn't pushing for a limited treaty on intermediate missiles with anybody. Putin and Trump are now like in a new race, even though they're good friends. 
doesn't make any sense, does it, that Putin would be a good friend of Donald Trump and they're both in an arms race to create greater nuclear weapons. The only answer to that, that paradox is the people promoting Donald Trump are the same people promoting Putin. The people that are buying up both the US and Russia, they want us to fight. They want us to build up nuclear weapons because for them, they get to play with their toys and see which one works better. We get radiation poisoning and die, which works for them too. They want us dead, so why not creep, keep the arms race going? Why not keep promoting you know, the growth of nuclear weapons across the globe? That's seemingly what's going on. The powers that be, the ones that are pushing a new world order, they really do want a, an arms race. They want to see war. They want to see everybody die. They don't want us here. They can replace us with automated robots. They can replace our workforce with robotic AI systems. They're getting ready to replace average people, people. And that's us. So we better start building this third party and take these people on because their game plan is to phase out humanity. And I, I'm not here to scare you. I'm here to tell you what's happening. It's just a heads up. It's kind of like, it's not a question of if, but when. We know a lot of you are going to lose your jobs in the next 10 years. Trump doesn't have any new ideas for new employment. I do. Biden doesn't have any new ideas because he's basically, you know, one step away from, you know, being in a nursing home. But uh, Trump doesn't have any ideas at all. He's just completely off base. I have a, a way of, of building jobs that won't require robots. Yeah. What would that be, David? Well, obviously the Homestead Renewal Plan is one of them. We've got hybrid capitalist ideas that will solve America's problems. We've got the uh, taking existing houses and fixing them up right here. $15 an hour fixing up houses and making them look like that and then flipping them and giving people home ownership. And then we've got solar rooftop insta installers here where we'll fund the rooftop production in America initially Homes that want to participate will actually get a chance to get into the lotto, the lottery rather, not lotto, lottery, and maybe we'll give you a free rooftop. The only thing you'll have to do is sign a piece of paper and you'll save money on your electricity on that side of the house. We'll be getting electricity from your, your house for 40 years. You will save money for 40 years on your electricity. We'll make some of the money back to pay for the electric installation the panels themselves and once that's paid for it's gravy for the US government so why not use your house as a way to harvest energy and save you money it's a brilliant plan I put together and it was so brilliant uh, Hillary Clinton used it in the debates she claimed it was her idea <laughs> while Donald Trump was stealing my other ideas Hillary was using my rooftop installation plan as her idea isn't that funny so both people in the 2016 election were using my ideas to promote a better solution for America. Neither one has original thought. Neither Donald or Hillary or anyone else, including Biden, have any original thoughts. Even my free education plan I've been promoting for six or seven years, the six week to six month training program, free of charge, you'll get a certificate to earn 20 to 25 bucks an hour to start in a corporation or company in your area that needs you. And all B students or above will qualify. Anyway, these are new ideas that we presented in our book, Hybrid Capitalism, which is available in our store for a 99 cent download or a paperback if you want to buy it. That being said, we're moving on. <sighs> Boris Johnson is basically acting like the English version of Trump. <laughs> I mean, they wanted Trump so bad to be, be their leader, they chose Boris Johnson. He warns Trump the U.S. must compromise to get a U.K. trade deal. Oh, well, we're really scared. Gosh, I don't know if we if we lose trade with the U.K. Oh, golly. Uh, I'm scared. Oh, golly. We won't be able to import uh, certain uh, rare fabrics with, uh, with prints on it. I mean, uh, is England a big provider of stuff? Uh, exactly. What do they trade exactly? I'm not really sure. Scones? <laughs> I'm trying to think of England as a manufacturing nation. I mean, I know they make solar panels. I know they've got an amazing, uh, they've got a wind 
generation system up in Ireland that looks good. We could buy their wind generators or their water generators look good. Yeah, so I mean, we could trade with the UK. GPD micro PC review with Ubuntu Mate. Really? I was using Mint. Meet now I want to use Mate. PC, a six inch laptop from Chinese hardware maker GPD. Now GPD isn't new to the sub notebook scene, having crowdfunded devices like the Win 2 games machine and the Pocket 2 laptop. Their handheld gizmos have impressed many, but how does the cheaper, more modest micro PC fare? I spent a week using one to find out. It's a six inch laptop cost. It's a six inch laptop that was crowdfunded. Wow. Who doesn't want a six inch laptop? Well, I don't. <laughs> Who doesn't want a six inch anything? I'd rather have something a little larger. Wouldn't you rather have a nine inch laptop or a 10 inch laptop and a six inch one? Okay, Joe Biden has introduced his new video arguing against Medicare for all while President Obama himself praised the idea. Really? Be clear that it means getting rid of Obamacare. And I'm not clear. I understand the appeal of Medicare for all, but folks supporting it should be clear that it means getting rid of Obamacare. And I'm not for that. This is VP Biden's argument against Medicare for all. Well, as you know, we can't afford Medicare for all because we don't have $60 trillion. That doesn't take a genius to realize we couldn't even afford Obamacare, which is already putting our country in bankruptcy. But the Democrats don't get that. Ironically, the Democrats don't realize that the only way we'll get out of this health care crisis is to get lower cost health care solutions on track. It's the only way we'll be able to do it. Any other way will be any will be won't be a solution. So I actually have a plan to get mobile medical units built in America that will service people in every city in this country. Within the first year, we could build up to 200 units for a, a modest investment of two, one billion dollars and operate them for another billion billion dollars. And mobile medical units could veritably solve our crisis in healthcare. We also could offer a public option as low as $60 a month. That's another idea that we have. But Medicare for all, that's a, that's a gimmick. That's a buzzword, kind of like the new green deal that Ocasio is saying. And many people are saying that's ridiculous, even liberals. Liberals are saying Ocasio is out to lunch. Yeah, but it's really interesting to see how A simple solution like a mobile medical unit could save a huge amount of money over the current ER costs that are plaguing our nation. So I've come up with a solution as well as the mobile medical units, and that is the 24 seven cancer cure center. This is a brand new innovative idea that I've come up with that no Democrat or Republican has. And it's a way to challenge the cancer fighting industry with a real heads up attempt to just get this done. I'm tired of hearing about people funding the cancer industry without any solutions. So one of my ideas is to actually get on board a 24 seven cancer cure center and base it at the NIH, National Institute of Health, use funding we currently divert to uh, huge pharmaceutical companies to fund the start of this begin making generic medicine for people who have cancer and start realizing that the best way to solve health care is to actually make people better. What a concept. Yeah. So that's part of the deal. It's part of the plan. And I don't approach this like Biden is doing. I'll play Biden's statement earlier. Yeah, I don't mind bringing the Biden health care response to you, but I definitely think that the, the Democrats are so in love with buzzwords that they're, they're forgetting that they've lost track of the real problem, the rising cost of health care. So this mobile medical unit rapid response system could be in every area of the country. And we could even have an outside sitting area with a tent seating. And we could even put a large TV on the side of here. Numbers, 
people to get in line. We can solve this whole problem and we can even fast track people to healthcare solutions if they present with serious problems. So everybody who comes up to the, the take a ticket will be able to put their finger in an oxygenation system. And if you pipe out higher than 94, 95 or 96% oxygenation, we'll, we'll put you in the lineup. If you're at 95 or 94, and we'll talk to doctors about this, but if you're at 94% oxygenation, we'll move you forward. You may be having a heart attack. Seriously, it's a simple test. You can buy these oxygenation sensors uh, for $16 online. It's not a big expense. So we could actually put that next to the ticket taper. So anybody seriously critically uh, ill, we could even hook it up to a, a, a temperature gauge. So if your body temperature is above 101, you'd be automatically fast tracked to the front of the line and you get immediate service. Well, your sarcasm is not really well received with Santhropy. I'm all about helping people and not corporations. I'm not gonna be your corporate solution for starting your economy. They've failed. Venture capitalists have failed. I would rather see the government produce generic pharmaceuticals than to just keep funding big pharma. We'll keep the funding going in certain areas for big pharma research, but we need to start focusing on getting low cost medicine to people in real need and low cost healthcare solutions like this. Now this could take a $30 copay, or if you're hooked up to the $60 a month plan, free care here, as well as free care in all our public and nonprofit hospitals with, with guaranteed service up to a point. If you need special coverage, we would say, hey, that's not covered under your plan. You, you can look at these other alternatives for funding, but most everything life-saving will be covered for, uh, for our, our public option of $60 a month, including dental care. This door right here could be the dental care. And if you don't have any money and you just come in there with no public, no, no, we'll give you a $50 extraction on your tooth that could come out of your $30 copay. So that's another option. We'll give you a filling for $50, even in the front. But if you want some decorative composite filling in the back, because you don't want to have mercury in your, your, your mouth or whatever, you have a serious silver amalgam problem, you'll have an extra payment to make for that composite, but it'll be affordable. All right? I want to work around everybody's particular needs and meet the individual's demands. And the more we do that, the more likely we're going to save this nation. All right. So let's get on board with a new uh, attitude and a new approach towards fixing the country and let's think positive. Otherwise, otherwise we're going to get sucked into the vortex of the two-party system and nothing gets done. No, I'm the first most popular show on the internet. There's nobody else with this many people watching every day. I've got numbers of people trying to get into this chat room in the millions. We've got worldwide coverage on UHF and VHF. I mean, I'm really, really making big progress, but the mainstream media won't cover me. Here, Joe doesn't know where he is, literally. Let's take a look. Neat town. Keen. I'm back, I've been here a number of times. Last time was, I think, uh, all the way back in 2014, but I've been here before that. I love this place. I lo look, what's not to like about Vermont in terms of the beauty of it? And what a neat town. <laughs> I mean, this is sort of a scenic, beautiful town. The mayor's been a good guy, and got, everybody's been really friendly. I like Keene a lot. He was in New Hampshire, and he said he likes Vermont a lot. Yeah, he was in New Hampshire, folks. He, he really didn't even know where he was. Uh, uh, Mark bought Mark bought the uh, the iVlog channel, and he's been systematically keeping people out of there too. About two months ago, Mark bought iVlog, and he has been locking, not, just keeping guests from coming in here. That's when he changed his guest policy. Oh, yeah, Mark bought iVlog. It's pretty obvious, isn't it? Can you tell me who owns Mike iVlog? And don't say Steve Cream, okay? <laughs> There's some BS story about Steve Cream owning iVlog. You don't know who owns iVlog, do you? Mark has hundreds of millions of dollars. Why wouldn't he buy iVlog? I mean, hello? Well, I can tell you, Steve Cream does not own iVlog. There is nobody by that name, Steve Cream. 
Poor Joe. Well, we've reached kind of a point of uh, saturation tonight. I don't think we've missed any any subjects. There's a tropical storm, uh, Dorian, forming in the Atlantic. It's probably one of these artificially created weather modification plans. They're probably headed toward Florida, and they want to, you know, sink half the, the coastline just to, you know, put those people in a financial distress. So we'll be, we'll be tracking Dorian uh, over the weekend. I'll talk about it on Monday. But... I'm not sure what which is real and which is fake when it comes to weather modification. We're still trying to figure out what's a real storm and what's a fake storm. Remember Hurricane Sandy, the only storm to ever make a left turn into, into prevailing winds in that region? Happened right before the 2012 election. Made Barack Obama seem like he was really a great guy, providing relief to the New Jersey's, Chris Christie's people. Yeah, that was all fake. No, no, no hurricanes ever made a left turn into prevailing winds in that region. Only Hurricane Sandy. Uh, we're, is, is KY Pip, you said that over, well, he, KY Poopy is coming out of a situation. Yeah, where he feels he's been life raped. So back off, okay? Let him explore his personality. It's the first time he's gone on camera in a long time recently. Thank you, KY Poopy. For trying to get on camera you're working through your problems of being life raped I hear you man this is good therapy for you people like you you're always very popular on the show Trump can use these powers to pressure US companies to leave China this has got to be the worst story to, to talk about let's bring it up for last it's unbelievable I started the show off with this today, but part one, but Trump actually believes that he can kick every company, the U.S. company, out of doing business in China. <laughs> Hours after China announced retaliatory tariffs on U.S. goods on Friday, Trump ordered U.S. companies to start looking for an alternative to China, including bringing your companies home and making your products in the USA. Eh, eh. This guy is completely lost. It is for us. Use Opera. I told you that. The stakes are high. U.S. companies invested a total of $256 billion in China between 1990 and 2017, compared with $140 billion Chinese companies investing in the United States. So we have a lot to lose. I mean, Budweiser's got, got offices in China. McDonald's has stores in China selling whatever. I just think that we've got a real problem. Trump actually thinks we should go back to pre-Richard Nixon era. Now, if Trump wants to be Richard Nixon, I, I urge him to stop talking like this. Oh, I gladly show you my tax returns to something like, my fellow Americans, I want to make this perfectly clear. I am not a crook. Something like that. But this whole attitude of acting like Nixon, does he really expect to win the 2020 election acting like Nixon? Really? Seriously? He wants to roll back the tide on trade back to pre-1972. What's going on? This guy needs to get checked out by a serious group of psychiatrists. We can't rely on the Democrats. They don't have any balls to prosecute all the felonies he's committed with Russian con conspiracies to, to rig the election or the obstruction he obviously did when he told the House that they couldn't interview Tim McGahn, Don, Dan McGahn, the guy who said that Trump openly tried to fire Mueller many times. That's called obstruction. He could be charged with that and collusion as well. But the Democrats are afraid. They're showing how poor and weak they are how unable they are to assemble any type of force in their party. The Democrats are showing how weak they are because they gave us Obama. Mr. Do-Nothing. Well, let's be clear. Uh, we're going to do that, and uh, we're going to make things better in Chicago. He didn't do anything for the Chicago people. All right, Sausage, thank you very much for coming in. All you guys are, have enjoyed the constant conversation of me talking to you. That's the least I can do. I have the gift of gab. I might as well use it, right? I want everyone to know that I don't make a penny on this show. 
I haven't made a penny in 11 years. And the censors that try to attack me are giving, are basically getting tons and tons of money. So we're up against a real slam from the elitists who are trying to stop the growth of this show. So tell your friends about a third party and tell us that we tell them we are being censored in a country that claims to be free and democratic. That alone should get people to wake up. Yep. Trump is systematically trying to dismantle our relations with some of the biggest trading partners we've got. Reneging on debts with major dealers like China is a huge mistake. Approaching a trade negotiation, acting like he's a tough guy, isn't going to work with China. They like finesse. They respect finesse. He obviously doesn't understand Chinese people. And his obsession with China has been noted throughout his campaign. So maybe he just wants to bury us financially in some place he calls, Oh, you could easily win a trade war. No, no problem. Thank you, Eric. Let's not forget the PP tape. Uh, Mueller did say that Donald Trump has been blackmailed by Russia over a sex tape, the PP tape. And he didn't think it was part of his purview to pursue. I'm sorry, but Mueller should have passed that on to the higher authorities. We should have been dealing with this as well. And we haven't. Yeah, so whatever he was doing with the urine and all the things with the urination. Hey, man. Now that it's obviously out that it happened, we need to get to the bottom of this. Our president could be blackmailed again by Russia. I know. So it's not fun. ATP has new solutions for this country, and the Democrats, Republicans don't. Hi everyone. Uh, today we're going to demonstrate how important solar energy is to our renewable energy future in America. So our solutions are different than the two-party system. We're not here to talk about the old ways of the two-party system. We're trying to build a new path for America. And Trump is the old way. Biden is the old way. So if you want to think to the future, you'll be looking toward a third party for the upcoming election and tell your friends about it. It's very important we build this party. All right, and I want to sign off with my famous outro song. Mr. Right. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. No, not tomorrow. Monday. Tomorrow's a, a day of rest. Uh, see you tomorrow is not happening. We'll do Monday. Conspiracy Monday starts at 5 p.m., but I will be in the show till 1 a.m. tonight following the videos we'll be playing and chatting with all of you. Take care, everybody. Good night. Have a good weekend. Get some sleep.
Too good. 